Hey. <laughs> yeah, I joined early. I didn't know that it was just uh, starting recording then. Yes, it is recording. This is where uh, I hope people upset it's this. So we should start now. <laughs> I, I think even on um, on YouTube, you probably can just go in and clip the first few minutes off, I assume. Otherwise, YouTube would be in funny product. You having a good afternoon? Yeah, it was quite interesting. So we are currently reworking how Frontend does the technical interview. And I hadn't looked at it because I was on vacation. And I was the guinea pig and basically interviewed. And I, I hit none of the uh, senior criteria. <laughs> Um, yeah, anyway, um, but it's um, we're basically doing also a merge request review similar to backend now, um, or at least that's the plan. Yeah, cool. Well, just remember to iterate. That's the key. Yeah, that's true. Hi, everyone. Hello. All right, it's half an hour past the full hour here, and uh, I'd like to open this up. Uh, first of all, thanks everyone for joining, um, and thanks uh, uh, Daniel for asking questions. Um, that uh, means that everyone gets to benefit uh, from uh, you asking questions, which uh, I always like answering questions. So um, thanks for that. Um, I have Sean and Dawa here as well uh, with me. So between the three of us, we have just enough knowledge to uh, kind of get this thing uh, going. Um, I think most of the faces here are new, apart from Seth, who also has knowledge here. So uh, he can also help out. Um, so the, the goal here is just to go through the experience factor and what, what they are and uh, answer any of the questions. I left some links in the doc there and I hope you got to uh, read through them. So I think I'll, uh, I'll open up with the first question. Just to clarify as well, Marin, we're yep. specifically talking about like backend engineers here, which have a, uh, there are a couple of caveats linked to in the, um, in the top of the agenda as well. Like we're not talking about everybody at GitLab here. We are, we're talking about our experiences as managers of backend engineers. Yep, good one, thanks. Um, all right, let's see. Olivia, do you want to uh, open the mic and say what yeah. you wrote? Yeah, thanks. Um, and sorry, by the way, this is a very new topic for me, and I haven't had the opportunity to try this uh, uh, with my own report yet. Uh, but my first question would be, how many times during the year are you reviewing this shit with your report? Because I'm expecting that when you define their goal for the year to advance in their career, we can leverage this experience sheet factor to define what their current position and what they are aiming for the end of the year and track the progress through that with the year. So 
I personally don't go over the experience factor worksheet, worksheet at all throughout the year. That is the end result for uh, HR, for uh, the compensation committee and so on. What I do is, high, like learning from my lessons from last year, um, I, I took the numbers that we had there um, and turned it into a coaching document and then went with my reports in one-on-ones and going over like plan how are we going to develop this uh, further so that when the new experience factor time comes right like in uh, in october um we'll be able to uh you know compare like how much we actually progressed or not like it's it's more of a this is the snapshot of whatever you did throughout the year um, and uh, i'm framing it that way so the f- experience factor and experience factor worksheet I'm not at all touching. I just use it as a starting point for, uh, for coaching throughout the year. Um, that's from my side. Uh, maybe others have different. I'm a, uh, not exactly the same. Like there's some differences in what I do throughout the year, but the same in the sense that like, you know, I don't look at this during the year. Um, so um, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's basically that. <laughs> It's the same for me. I use a different uh, sheet and a different document to have those regular career development conversations uh, because the experience factor worksheet doesn't quite offer everything I'm looking for in those career development conversations. I'm only using it just like Marion and Sean to do that end of year, um, you know, evaluating what the experience factor is going to be for the compensation uh, review. Yeah, I'll just chime in and, and say same, same for me. I, I just did it you know, at the end of last year and I, I just intend to revisit it again at the end of this year and I'm not really using it throughout the year. Um, so sometimes uh, this may sound like a somewhat, uh, I'm trying to think how to describe it, a trap question, but uh, some the one of the reasons why I think most people don't want to do it in that fashion is because of the concept of, of people thinking it's a checklist. Like, oh, if I do this, this, and this, then therefore... I'm going to get this. And that is definitely uh, like something that if if you're having a conversation with somebody, like you need to make sure they understand that, you know, like we don't, we do, we do it based on behaviors and expectations, not based on, on checking off boxes uh, from that perspective. Obviously this is a representative of the situation, but it's not like if you do these five things magically end up in this quadrant, it's that you're performing in this fashion that gets you in that quadrant. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Okay. There's also the fact that the experience factor worksheet seems to change every year. Uh, so there's very little in the way of continuity there. Uh, so I'd rather have a document that I can actually use and that we look at similar subjects every time that don't directly map to what is in the experience factor worksheet. Uh, if you look at the links that Marion added to the top, uh, I added one extra link actually because the experience factor worksheet that is linked from our uh, somewhere in the handbook is actually a different one than we used last year for the backend engineers, uh, which actually caused some confusion earlier this year when one person in my team was getting promoted because at that point, of course we need to find out the new experience factor worksheet to kind of figure out their new salary um, and since the the the, the range the, the numbers that the backend engineering experience factor worksheet uses are different from the ones that the, the general the generic the regular one uses um, we still actually cannot use the one that people always wants everyone to use because then suddenly because a 0.9 means something different on the one list from the other um, you would get a 10% difference between people's increases just because whether they were had their number evaluated late last year or whether they got a promotion this year. So there's a lot of confusion about experience factor worksheets. One of the things that Myron, Sean and I also mentioned in that thread earlier is that we don't know how useful all of this will be anyway because it changes every year. Uh, but at least then we'll all be confused instead of, you know, <laughs> just all of us individually being differently confused. It, it might be worth for historical reasons or, or maybe not, let me know revisiting why that is the case, like why there is a separate worksheet and why those numbers are different. Um, I can, I can try <laughs> to explain it. So um, last year or prior to sometime last fall, I guess, uh, everybody, we, we were hiring backend developers. So it was a different role uh, with a different um, uh, like salary range. I don't know what the correct term is. And um, and then we, we made this move to switch that role to be a back-end engineer that had a, a, a shifted, like a higher salary range. And we wanted to increase the, um, like the expectations uh, level that we were hiring for and, and also the salary. And so that meant that for all existing back-end developers, they turned into back-end engineers. 
at a slightly at a lower experience factor than they were back end developers um, so that you know uh, switching from one day to the next their salary remained consistent but their experience factor shifted somebody you know clarify if I'm if that doesn't help yeah so everyone including like um, me and you I guess like had an implied experience factor that was probably um, in most cases, like below 0 0.9, because we'd changed the benchmark and changed the expectations. So then the point of the review was to figure out where do you fit according to the the new expectations um, and sort of use that as the new baseline. Um, the other issue we had was we were using the um, requirements from the job description, but there is a question about whether we use that or the career matrix, like how those all fit in together. Um, the career matrix has 18 separate, um, uh, what's the word, uh, values, uh, not values, uh, alignments. Um, no, that's not the word either. Competencies, that's the, word, that's, that's the word I'm looking for, competencies. 18 separate competencies in three different sections. So um, that will also be a challenge if we use that. I think it will be, I, you know, using that career matrix for career development discussions with my team, I found it very useful and I really liked the way it's broken out. Um, but typically we don't talk about all 18 because, um, you know, it's not a checklist. You don't actually need to demonstrate a lot of strength in all 18, as long as you can demonstrate strength in the core values for GitLab and in, um, a decent coverage in other areas. Also the promotion document would get very long and repetitive if we mentioned all 18 in their own section. Um, so that's kind of a slightly different point but um i think it does feed into like what we might do with the experience factor worksheet this year as well um so yeah yeah because i think we will want them to align somehow like if you've been spending the whole year focusing on some of the career matrix points with your report and at the end of the year we're looking at completely different things to see how experienced they are then obviously that's going to cause trouble as well so if we don't copy all 18 and have like a specific number on all 18 and then just use the average of that uh, i am curious what it is going to look like um you know otherwise how that will evolve based on the career yeah. matrix. Yeah. I also uh, just, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was just trying to recap based on all your feedback. Thank you for sharing all your different ways to doing things. But what is a bit scary to me is that none of you are actually using the thing that is supposed to be the contract between the reports and the engineering management and the people also define their career progress. So either we did things very wrongly until then and I mean, the last year change was to me of something very bad because people have worked for a whole year based on something that has changed at the very end when it was supposed to be as a support to estimate their progress. So shouldn't we start right away to estimate people progress based on this shit and make sure that at the end of the year we are using this shit and not another way because otherwise it's very dependent from one manager to another to adapt. So it's not really fair. That is I something think. we I think it's always dependent on one manager to another, but also I think what Christopher said, sorry, Marit. I th also think what Christopher said earlier about it not being a checklist is right. Um, and the other thing to consider is if you're talking to someone about career development and promotions, um, a promotion is not determined by you maxing out your career development worksheet at your current level. It is determined by you demonstrating behaviors of the next level, which is not exactly the same thing. Um, and I think it's good to have a separate discussion away from the experience factor. I like that the experience factor is a snapshot of where we are in time rather than the ongoing conversation because um, basically I think it's too uh, numerically focused is the way I would put it, um, which isn't necessarily reflective of how career development works for people. And also um, the experience factor worksheet that you see in the handbook, right? Like that uh, purple thingy with the percentages and all of that. Um, we had a less flashy version a year before that, and it was similar, and we fell into the exact danger that Christopher pointed out, where we had people very upset that a certain number was not uh, matching what they were uh, expecting. And um, yeah, a lot of damage control needed to be done afterwards. So this is why I personally walked away completely from the worksheet because it's so focused on, you know, numbers and checklists.
Um, want to move along to the next questions? <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to also point out, Olivia, you have a really good point there, but um, just from historical perspective, two years in a row, we did this last minute in October. So if history is teaching us anything, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hold my breath that this is gonna be done uh, sooner on the company level. So um, better to be prepared even with what we have right now, honestly. And then to be clear, Olivier, if, if, the, if you have come under the impression that the Experience Factor Worksheet is what we use to kind of guide career progression, then that is something that is, I guess, wrongly documented in the handbook. Because the way that we have always interpreted it is just as in October, you get the sheet that looks different every time, fill it in, that's going to be the salary starting January 1st. And it's completely different from all of the career development, career mapping uh, documents that are elsewhere in the handbook. Um, so obviously these, these uses are similar, related, and it's easy to kind of conflate those topics. Um, but I have never seen the Experience Factor Worksheet as a career progression, career growth tool. All right, um, the next one. Uh, Dan, do you want to speak up? Yeah, uh, thanks for an awesome question, Olivier. It seemed to garner a lot of feedback from everyone. So great start there. Um, I guess, uh, my experience so far of anything relating to the experience factor worksheet is in hiring um, and in hiring you're expected to put in an experience factor. Um, uh, these things have the same name. So I thought perhaps they were related somehow. Uh, it seems like they're probably not. I'm trying to get a sense of how people come up with that number as a, a life cycle of someone joining our team and understanding like if we're coming up with some number between, you know, 0.9 and whatever it is, you know, uh, you know, how are we then building that into a consistent or con and contiguous experience for someone that's joining the team? Uh, and are they actually related or not, I suppose? And that can be a really quick answer. I mean, they are related. So basically on hiring, the thing you decide is like a preliminary experience factor, basically. And once in the first review, it will be reviewed. There's actually an issue linked here because for some hires, it means they have to wait 15 months to get a real experience factor. Um, and yeah, so it's basically, it's the same thing. And the first one is just a guess that we are correcting after the next review. I hope I didn't say anything wrong. No, you, I think you, you hit it on the, nail, on the head there. It's, it's exactly like that, where you're just kind of guessing and you're hoping you're not too far off. And if you are, well, then you have a lot of work to do. Uh, Christopher, did you add the question about the compensation calculator? Yeah, I did. I uh, apologize. I didn't put my name there. Uh, the experience is uh, part of the part of the compensation calculator, right? So like when you look at it, it's part of the range. So I think this is, is definitely, I mean, like uh, it's definitely causal, right? Yeah, the distinction I see is that for the, the offer, you need to provide the final number. You don't need to provide the whole worksheet, like because you That's can't fair. really do the That's whole fair. worksheet. Um, yeah. Also, to to be clear, I don't know if this is different for anybody else, but I I don't like look at the actual worksheet when I'm doing hiring. I just go based on like this person. Oh no, I'm absolutely the same. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I go by those definitions that are linked in the double conversation page, which is basically meeting expectation, demonstrating strength, or demonstrating excellence. You kind of try to guess based on what you read in like everyone's notes uh, and then what your own take was after talking to them. But obviously, this is going to be off in some cases. I don't know what we would do if someone has a significantly lower number the next review comes around because we, of course, cannot actually dial down their salaries. Uh, I mean, right, but if someone has significantly lower thing, you're going to notice it in the first one or two months, right? And right we have a different conversation at that point yeah that's performance management right exactly depending on depending what the delta is we're talking about like well that's... we interviewed them and we thought they would be excellent and then it turns out that they are only strong then i don't know if we should say we want you to be excellent unless you don't have a job anymore i don't know if it becomes performance management if they are meeting the requirements they're just not as excellent as we thought they would be but that's also kind of a separate conversation i think from what we're having here yeah, I think of it more as uh, transparency where uh, you're communicating that, you know, like the likelihood that you're going to get any further increases is pretty low if uh, we think that we brought you in at a higher, higher experience factor than where you're currently performing. That would be the, that would be the transparent, like that is coaching. <laughs> like, like it's, it's, it's being transparent and then having the discussion. Okay. Like they may ask, well, how do I get better? And then that's where the conversation goes from there. Right. So. 
Uh, yeah, at the risk of, I don't want to extend another question into 20 minutes or whatever. Um, and I feel I've got a bunch of questions down here, so I just want to be careful with time. Um, could anyone sort of walk through an example or do we feel like it's just too long winded to go through here given, um, given that it's obviously fairly complex and somewhat undefined? So um, I'll just say that a team input, team member input here, a manager input here, I have never had a situation where those numbers were different, mostly because I defined those numbers with my report prior to any uh, filling of the document, right? It is, um, I'm, I'm leading this in a one-on-one in -on -one conversation where I'm saying like, hey, I'm thinking about this number because of the reasons. Uh, what is your view on this? Where are, we, where are the gaps? In 95% of the cases, the numbers are spot on because I've been working with the report for a year, like throughout the year. Uh, in 5% of the cases, it's not, but then it's a discussion where we start writing things down. And when we write things out, we have a discussion about what's happening and we see where the gap is. Um, maybe that leads more towards, okay, I missed this whole section. Thank you for reminding me, I agree. Or the report is completely missing the, the point of the question or point of, uh, of the requirement. And they need to work a bit more on, uh, on getting that number up. So it's a discussion between, for me, it's a discussion between uh, a manager and a team member and the numbers for me have never been different. Um, I'm trying to look it up, um, but, um, Google Drive is being quite slow for me, but last year, did we even have a team member input and a manager input or because of the way we did it and because of the compressed timeline, I thought we just had a manager input. Yeah, um, the best yeah. should be used only as a single value, not two columns like the general, general experience factor worksheet. But that was re-leveling, right? Like that was the backend uh, engineer uh, experience factor sheet. This was not- Yes, I'm just, I'm just saying like, you know, for yeah. my context here, like, you know, it's been a while since I had a conversation with someone where we'd both put in a number for that because last time we did it, it was just me basically. And like, again, from, from my side, what I did with my reports was even with that one document, I went with them through this so that we don't have follow-ups, right? Like I wanted to get it right the first time before we submitted rather than having surprises all over. Uh, so it was yeah. still a conversation for me. Yeah, I got, I got mine wrong the first time, but I got them wrong too low because I was using the wrong baseline. So for me, it was like, because I'd already had the conversation with the lower values, like I got, <laughs> got really easy conversations after that, but like the conversations before were harder. Um, so I can't give a good example there, but maybe Dara or Seth can. So I mean, I was on the receiving end of this by Tim. And I basically, he filled out the numbers and I didn't see it. Um, so you had to document twice. I filled in my numbers and then we discussed and summed up where um, where our numbers mismatched. And it's also kind of a good retrospective for the person, right? Looking into this. Uh, so I, I like that experience. And in most numbers, we had the same. Sometimes he judged me higher or whatever, or sometimes a bit lower. The only thing, and I'm just going to raise it here, it's an extra point later on. It was just sometimes really, really awkward because... Um, when it came to a, you know, because we have this, these, uh, how do you call it? These intervals defined, right? And it's like, yeah, you know, this next interval starts at a zero, zero point one more value. And I think you're not already uh, expert in that role, but you're really, really close. So I'm giving you like a value of uh, zero dot nine, nine instead of one. And then those whole things get, thrown into a calculation so it actually doesn't really matter at the end um, if you get like 0 0.99 or 1 on both one of those uh, values in the table but it was kind of awkward um, a bit um, yeah yeah so for, for my part since uh, the numbers will get averaged at the end anyway I just use two decimals and then for the second decimal I only use like a five or a zero so basically you're in between meeting and strength or you are at either of the levels. I don't think there's value in trying to figure out exactly which decimal was the right one. I agree. And um, given the number of um, like rows there are, like changing that decimal is unlikely to have a major change to the final number. And the final number is fundamentally what matters to the report. Like it's what matters to me because that's what determines my salary. I don't know about anybody else, but like that's the one I care about the most. Um, 
so yeah i think it's yeah try to avoid getting too much in the weeds with um specifics there um all right lucas yes okay next point i and i think it was already part of the first big uh, discussion blur um how do you so you basically don't use the experience factor sheet at all for career development or do you drive something out of it uh for your normal career development that we're doing uh, that you're doing um so like i said i personally don't i don't use the experience factor worksheet at all um i did use it as a you know point of let's start this discussion and that went into a coaching document right like we recognized I don't know, you are um, low on open, open source contributions or whatever. So we're going to like see how we can um, work on that a bit. Like that's how I used it. Uh, yeah, I have a separate document with each of my reports that we use to talk about career development um, and that we then like I then add on to our one to one agenda on a schedule it's like eight weeks or so for each person. Um, and they can add it onto the agenda if they want into in intervening uh times as well but um i i think of the career development conversation as a conversation um more than um a spreadsheet in general so but dawa has been working on a spreadsheet that actually looks very useful so i might need to rethink that <laughs> yeah so i don't use like i said before the experience factor worksheet for any of the career development conversations but after the uh, first iteration of the career matrix that dahlia and rachel have been working on after that went live i um, put up set up a career development spreadsheet that kind of visually represents like these are the behaviors for this level these are behaviors for the next level and then kind of a path from a to b and identifying where everyone is on each of those individual items um, and that is what i use to kind of support those conversations of identifying specific things to focus on etc cetera, etc cetera, but not the actual experience factor worksheet and it has a large part to do with something sean mentioned earlier which is that the experience factor worksheet is about evaluating their experience in their current role but the career path is kind of automatically about going from your current role and current expectations to the next level expectations and then um, um, you know, whether they start showing some of those, which is not really represented well if you're just kind of trying to create the current level expectations on a scale of 0 0.9 to 1.1. Can you share that? Uh, will, are you willing to share I'll that? I'll put the link in. Yeah, yeah. I shared it in awesome. the thread last week. I'll put a link in. Awesome. Um, for, for career coaching, uh, on my side, I have a, also a separate sheet where um, I am focused on quarters. So we have like previous quarter and the next quarter, right? Like what we've been doing this quarter and um, what kind of changes did we do and what kind of goals do we want to set for the next one? And then we always go, when the quarter turns, we go back and see like, okay, what were the goals in the next one? All right, we, that is now the current one. We are going to be working on that and, you know, kind of roll through that and kind of have, uh, for me, like I have once per month, I talk with people about this. So you have in one quarter, three discussions about your, your career, at least from, uh, from my side. And that has proven to be very good for some people who are very, very driven. And for people who are not very driven, um, it also exposed something and that is, they're fine. They don't necessarily want to deal with, uh, with this uh, going further. So, um, so yeah. There seems to be a lot of overlap between different approaches, like uh, the, the thing that actually was shown at Contribute for career development, your sheet, Dawi. I know of at least two different kind of sheets. Um, is there like any effort to consolidate and maybe have a recommended sheet for engineering or something like that? Um, I think it would be very helpful too, because I found that um, if you hand off, you know, because we are growing so fast, if you hand off an IC to, an, to the next manager, it's kind of hard if you don't have like a standardized format to also give the um, career development um, or, you know, to hand that over as well. I think you can overfit on the format. Um, like, you know, the, if we had this standardized format before, it would have changed when we'd introduced the career matrix anyway. Um, so I think. I've got, I've got, I'm going to have to hopefully do some handover soon, so I might be completely wrong in this, but my hope is that as long as it is clear, like what the understanding is between the manager and the, the report about like where they stand in their level, it, the actual document format that you're using is not the most important thing to me. Um, yeah. Paige, I feel like 
We're like right coming up on time here and, and I'm sure I'm not the only one that has to run to another, um, another meeting. Um, does it make sense to have another conversation about it or, or is there a work, um, is there a actual um, handbook page that actually walks through this that we can start iterating on? Because this is, there's obviously, this is not anything I've read or heard anywhere. This is all just sort of word of mouth by doing random stuff, all related and all valuable. I don't mean to suggest otherwise. So all the links that we have are linked in the in the overview part. So all the handbook items, sheets that we have and so on, everything else um, that we talked about here is on person per person basis um, and to, to the best of their knowledge, I would say. I Marian, think as far as the, career, the experience factor worksheet is concerned, yes, those are the only links in the handbook I'm aware of, but there are at least two or three more around career development that all link to different example sheets as well. Um, so, and I would say if there's ever a time to standardize the stuff, it should coincide with the career matrix when we are also kind of all agreeing on what qualities are we going to be looking at. Um, I'm happy to be involved in that with Dalia and others as well. Uh, but I think we should all first bring in feedback there. Yeah, I'm, I think there's definitely value in um, just describing what we've described here, even, even though it is like, you know, personal opinion like there is there is value in saying like, you know, we have found that, you know, some people find this, some people find that. Um, and I'm happy to add that to the handbook. If you could create an issue on the website and assign me Daniel, I'll do that next week because I've got to run and pick up my baby. Um, so <laughs> have a good day, everybody. All right. Thanks, Thank everyone. Thanks, everyone.